Now we'll be taking a real life classification problem and we'll be calculating sharp values on the classifier models. For classification, we have a problem for patients' readmittance. So this is the hospital data set which I have taken from Kaggle, which has 25,000 rows and 65 columns. And the output of the model should be whether a person would be readmitted or not. So if it is if he or she is readmitted, the output would be one, and if he or she is not readmitted, the output would be zero. So this is just to predict on the basis of the reports and on the basis of the medications and the past records and all these things, whether a person would be readmitted in the hospital or not. So I hope you got the problem. First things first, we have to see whether the data is clean or not, whether the data is data set is good or not. So we'll be seeing, we'll be using the is null function and we'll be aggregating it to see whether there are any null values in the data. So we can see that there are no null values in the data and therefore it is a clean data set. After that, we can see that there are a lot of Boolean values, a lot of features which have Boolean values. We have to convert these Boolean values into binaries, that is zeros and ones. So here we are just taking all the features, taking all the columns which have Boolean values and we are converting it into binary. After that, we will be defining our vectors which are y2 and x2. So y2 would be readmitted and x2 would be all other features except readmitted. After that, we'll be using the train test split method to get our train and test data set. And the first model which we are going to use is random forest classifier. Again, we'll be just importing, uh, sorry, again, we'll be just creating an object of random forest classifier and we'll be fitting the training data set onto it. Then for the example, row 21,693 from the training data set, what we can see is the values it is give, the probability values which it is giving is for class 0 the probability is 0.82, for class 1 the probability is 0.18. That corresponds to the output as 0. So the output for this particular feature would be 0 because the probability is comparatively greater. And the actual value in the training data set for this particular example is also 0. So the model is working fine. And now let's see how the model is working, sorry, how the model is performing actually. So we are printing a classification report for the model and we can see that the F1 score accuracy is 0.62. So it is okay, okay, not very much good, but yeah, okay, it will do. Then we'll be plotting the confusion matrix for this particular model. And we'll be plotting both the confusion matrix, one without the normalization and with the normalization. So here we can see the predicted label versus the true label. Let's now move on to the main task of this particular demo, which is to plot the SHA values. So SHA values here, if I try to, since the data set is quite large, so if I try to calculate and plot the share values for the complete data set, it would take a long time. So if you guys want, you can try that on your own. But here, just to save time, I am using only first 100 examples of the validation data set and I'm calculating the share values on these first 100 examples only. Then we'll be plotting the summary plot and for the summary plot, the feature dependence here also is in the decreasing order. Order That means that the number of inpatient feature is affecting the output the most. Then after that, number of output patients, number of emergency, number of diagnosis, number of medications and all. And also we can see that uh, blue color represents class 1 and red color represents class 0. So the number of inpatient is affecting the output for class 1, the output becoming class 1 and class 0 in the same way. So these are the side bar graphs as we can see. So and the length of both the bars, the blue and the red bar is same. That corresponds to that the number of inpatient is actually effect, affecting the output to be class 1 or class 0 in the same way. So there is no, no biasing we can say. Yeah. Same goes for number of outpatient and all the other features in this particular data set. After this, 
we have plotted a force plot. So I told you in the slides, in the presentation only, that in the force plot, we can only see the shell values or the effect of the features on the output for a single example rather than for the complete data set. So here we are taking the first example from the data set and we are seeing how the features are actually affecting it. So you can see that the number of uh, number of lab procedures is equals to 3, number of inpatients equals to 0. These are the values which are you know actually contributing towards the blue class that is class 1 and number of emergency equals to 1 and payer code equals to 1 they are corresponding or they are contributing to class 0 which is represented by red color same so like that you can see for each of the features so this is for the first example then second example third example you can see what all features are corresponding or what are what all features are responsible for the output the third model which we are taking sorry the second model which we are taking is sgd classifier which is stochastic gradient descent classifier and here we have created the model we have trained it on our training data set then we are uh, printing the classification report for the model so for the classification in the classification report we can see that the accuracy f1 score accuracy came out to be 0 0.59 which is comparatively bad than the random forest classifier which gave us the f1 accuracy of 0 0.62 so then we'll be printing the confusion matrix for the same and here we have our summary plot. So in the summary plot for the SGD classifier, what we can notice is that number of medication. So higher the number of medication, higher are the chances of the patient being readmitted. The lower the number of medications represent that the patient would may not be readmitting. Then same goes with the number of the number of inpatients, then we have number of lab procedures and also one thing here I want to show you like you can read this particular graph the same way we did with the regressor problems but one thing which we need to see here is that there are some features which are not actually affecting the data set or which are not actually effect, affecting the model output like age 80 to 90 when the age goes to 80 to 90 category it actually does not affect the model output, the patient would have to readmit only. And we can see that the graph is not stretched at this particular feature. Same goes for the payer code or metformin number. So I don't know what actually this is, but this is some medical term, metformin number. So this is how you can see that few features are not actually contributing for the model output value change while few features are there which are highly responsible for the model output value like number of medications. Next on we go to SVC which is support vector classifier and support vector classifier also requires the data to be standardized so we will be using the same standard scaler to scale our data set or to standardize our data set and then we'll be printing the classification report again and the classification report says the accuracy is 0 0.62 which is the same as random forest classifier and here is the confusion matrix without and with the normalization here comes the concept of explainers again so till now we were using tree explainer and we have used linear explainer in case of linear regressor but for SVC we require to use kernel explainer so one thing about kernel explainer is it is almost a generic explainer but the bad thing is it is slow so I was using 100 examples but still it was showing that it would take around 8 hours 52 or 57 minutes to calculate the shaft values and to print them so therefore I just stopped the execution and uh, I thought of not actually going into that because I could not just wait for 8 hours right so if you are ever planning to use kernel explainer I will be suggesting you first to see whether you can use any other explainers or just try it with simple data set because as complicated as your data set would be the slower the kernel explainer would get then the fourth classifier which we have is MLP classifier which is multi-layer multi -layer perceptron 
and then we are fitting the training data set we are printing the confusion matrix matrices and the same goes for this one also because like i was using kernel explainer on mlp model also so it was again taking a lot of time so i stopped the execution and we did not go forward with it till now we saw the calculation of shaft values on the models which are provided by sklearn or you can use keras models also but now let's see how you can do it with a custom deep learning model so a custom deep learning model which you have built on your own so the model uh, the problem which we are taking here is the amnes dataset problem and for those of you who do not know what amnes dataset is so amnes dataset is considered of images of handwritten digits that is from 0 to 9 and the model is going to be predicting the digit like suppose we give an image with the handwritten handwritten digit as the input the model would output the value itself the model here which we are using is actually taken from the github account of keras team itself and uh, i have not actually created this model on my own this is from the keras teams here they have taken they have taken the data set and this data set which is also provided by keras also only and uh, then they are flattening the images all the training and testing data set images thereafter this is the model part so in the model they are creating a cnn which is convolution neural network and the first layer which they are providing is a con2d layer with 32 filters and a kernel size of 3 by 3 the activation function they are using is relu and one thing about sequential models in keras is that you have to provide the input shape for the first layer only because the model does not know what would be the shape of your input for the first layer for the corresponding layers keras is intelligent enough to calculate the output from the previous layer the output shape of the previous layer and take that as the input shape for the next level uh, next layer then the second layer would be again a convolution layer with 64 filters and 3 by 3 kernel size activation is activation function is again relu thereafter we have a max pooling layer with a size of 2 by 2 then we have dropout regularization of 0 0.25 so this regularization is provided so that the model is not overfitted to the training data set then we'll be flattening the output we'll be connecting it to a dense layer which has the activation function as relu again and again a dropout of 0 0.5 and then in the end we have a softmax layer because the output varies from 0 to 9 we have to classify the output as we have to classify the output in 0 to 9 we have a softmax layer instead of a segment which is used for binary classification so after that we'll be compiling the model we'll be fitting it onto the training data set and we'll be printing the evaluation score so the Test accuracy came out to be 0.83. After that, we'll be moving to calculating the shaft values for the same model. So for the image models, we have to calculate a background also so that the model has the background image and it will only be seeing as the feature dependence of the values or of the features. So after that, uh, after defining the background, we'll be using the deep explainer here. So since this is a deep model which we just now created, we'll be using the deep, deep explainer providing the model itself and after that we'll be calculating the shape values for four examples from the test data set which are from 1 to 4. So after that we'll be plotting the shape values and in this particular plot what you can see is that the above plot explains 10 outputs from digit 0 to 9 for four different images. Red pixels increase the model's output while blue pixels decrease the output. The image inputs are shown on the left and as nearly transparent grayscale backings behind each of the explainers, the sum of shaft values equals the difference between the expected model output and the current model output. So you can see that for the zero image, the blank middle is important while for the four image, the lack of connection on the top makes it a four instead of nine. So this is how you can see how the features are actually affecting the model output value. So in this case, it, res uh, it corresponds to the red and the blue values of the pixels. 
So that's it for this module guys. I hope you like this video and uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to comment down below and we'll be trying to answer these questions as soon as possible. So thank you. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Also subscribe to the channel and press bell icon to get the latest updates from AI probably. Thank you. So folks, the video ends here. So if you're new to this channel, please subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications. Thank you.